side of the microphone for the green light to the speed trap. Greg Reno and Jody calls them as they seize them, and you better believe them. Here, relevant news, biased opinion, and outright nonsense regarding every aspect of automotive culture. Gas with mechanical trickery never before broadcast over FCC regulated airwaves. Thrilled with the explosive tension as Ray and Joe cuss each other down track. Barrel roll across the finish line, laughing at certain disasters as they shake hands with the devil. <laughs> All that and so much more at high noon this Sunday on the Motormouth Radio Hour. Call in and speak live with the wizards of speed and the live feed, Ray Carino and Joe D. Bring the whole family. Kids under 12 get in free every Sunday at noon on WHBC. Take the Hempstead Turnpike to the Meadowbrook Parkway and look for the no parking on the expressway and no express service on the parkway side. Go right on Highway 24 to Garden City. $2 all-day parking includes pit pass. All righty, teens, queens, guys in blue jeans, everybody out here with umbrellas and raincoats. You're listening to Motormouth Radio, Long Island's only automotive talk show. Yeah, we're in a garage. In rainy Malibu. You hear Malibu. echo? Echo, echo. We're, we're in Whitestone today. We're not in Long Island, so we are doing a, a little, something yes. a little different. So we're Queens' only talk show of cause. You yes. got that right. <laughs> it's our first live remote, and we're having a ball here. We're just trying to, to, to it's a wet, it's It's a wet ball. Yeah, we have to dry it off every once in a while, but, uh, you know. It's, uh, we're, uh, yeah, it, it, it's, it's really cool. By the way, uh, those of you who shoot me Facebook messages and so forth during the broadcast, usually the, my laptop is behind me, and uh, I can't really see it under the circumstances so please don't do that today because nobody's going to hear nothing for the next two hours from me unless something changes okay right. so communications we can take phone calls though so you oh yes 516-572-7440 absolutely and don't forget to check us out on the web motormouthradio.com or follow us on twitter motormouth radio or joe's favorite which is instagram on um, real underscore <laughs> motormouth radio exactly oh i'm going to go up on that balcony and yell <laughs> so open your window. Yeah, there you go. So we do have a lot of things planned here, Joe. Uh, uh, we got interviews. We got personalities showing up. Our host, Billy G. Billy Velvet has been doing this show for how many years has it been it's now? It's like I, 25 years it's a long or something time, like yeah. that. Yeah. And, of course, this is a community event. This is something that not a lot of people know about. Uh, I found out about it because of with Marty Billy. Shore. Yeah, Marty. And then, yeah, through Billy. And, and I had a kick to you. Yeah, because I was like, oh, Whitestone. Yeah, of course. Every year. Come I on. had to ask you, what's this place called Malba? And you said, no, it's in White Star. Tell me, what it. is this Malba? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, of course, we'd had Marty on the show, uh, uh, Marty Shore on the show as a phone guest many times in the past. Yes. Because of his his great literary works. Yes, and he's got a ton of those. So, uh, yeah, we'll be talking about that today, among other things. And mm-hmm. I'm sure he'll regale us with many tales. And he will be doing a, he'll be doing book signings here too. So, really, I brought the one some of mine that I'm going to have autographed. Excellent. By and if you don't know, no, we Marty, just need an umbrella. You know, Marty was Joel Rosen's partner at Motion Performance. Performance yes. in Baldwin, and if you don't know motion. what motion is, you're a kid. Get Wikipedia, yeah, because you're probably uh, under thirty. Because uh, it was one of the premier high performance. Uh, yeah, there was some kick butt cars come out of that place over the years. You everything know? they did got track tested. In fact, they even had a guarantee on the phase cars, the phase one, two, and three cars yes. that they would they would go a certain elapsed time and speed, and if they didn't, they would take it back. Yeah. So uh, that that's pretty. That's pretty. That's uh, some pretty impressive stuff over there. You absolutely. Know? I, sp- I spent many time, many many years uh, reading the magazines there. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, that, that stuff was all over the magazines. Motion. Oh, sure, sure. I always aspired to a Motion Camaro or a Motion Nova. Me too. I, I was lucky to grow up just a few towns away from there, so I was able to go there right. to buy parts. But mm-hmm. never, you know, I was never one of the big players because. Uh, uh, you know, you need, you need some money to be a big player. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, and besides that, at that point in Queens, you guys, you know, that was out in the, you know, the undiscovered reaches of space there. So. Well, yeah, for you guys, but, you know, I know guys would always travel because uh, I've got... Oh, yeah, to, eventually we did, yeah. You but. know, s I, I went to s Speed, and, um, of course, um, the one you worked at. Um, F&J Roadrunner. F and J and and B and R B and R. That's what yeah. I'm no, they, you know, back in the day, they, you know, your, your local speed shop was uh, was pretty much your, your hangout. You know, where you uh, you had loyalty to that particular store as a rule. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And uh, you had friends from that. But um, all right, you know what? We're going to go with the phone. We're going to take a call, and we will say. Hey, that's right. Yeah. Joins the flashy thing today. We'll say hi. You're on with the motor mouths. <laughs> 
Hey, hi, hey, hi, get the ball, get the ball. Situations with your remote. You're doing a really good job out there and having a lot of fun. The day is young. Don't worry about it. What's going on, Brock? How can we help you today? Okay, I got a okay, got question, for question for you. I picked up the I new picked toy, up the new Saturn, toy, a Saturn Sky. Uh, oh, nice Saturn, car. Saturn oh, cool. Mm-hmm. Okay. Just for the wife, just, just, the wife, just, just to kick around, around him. And I'm, sure. ha- and I'm a having a system cooling system problem, system problem, problem now with it. Push now the, now the system, change the thermostat, the thermostat but, mm-hmm. the but the car runs from zero degrees up to 220 and holds. Like it's not, like the thermostat is slammed shut. And what, okay, it's 220 degrees, all right, and, um, and it stays there and never overheats or nothing? Uh, yeah, it's overheating, uh, yeah. right. It goes right up. Like, uh, the thermostat is never opening at all. There's no bypass. It just keeps going, climbing exponentially. Any that ideas? Doesn't... I flushed the system. Uh, when I changed up the uh, antifreeze in it, it was crystal clear. It was pure, nothing in it, no shavings, no metallic, absolutely nothing. It was perfect. Uh, but they're making the key sign, which is like thermostat. Thermostat. Yeah, which is I bet. Wait a second. Now, it <laughs> as far as far as that goes, what happens here is um, it's it's definitely two hundred and twenty degrees. Yep, go two yep, fifteen. Go two fifteen. Twenty it stays. And the electric fan is kicking in, so I checked that. I threw the air conditioning on. Fan kicked right on with it, so I kind of eliminated that. Okay. You have antifreeze in there, right? At the proper mixture? Yep, yep, yep. Okay. right. So yep. right. So right. Just sitting at idle. Just idle, and it goes right up. Not even driving it. You don't even have to drive the car. As soon as you start it up. Just start it up. This when I ran it, when I ran it, it, you know, the air out of it. The air out of it. It just kept it going just kept up, going and, up. And, yeah, yeah. Bronk, what is the yeah. boiling point yeah. of antifreeze and water? I'm sorry? Pro- what, is, what is the boiling point of the... The boiling temperature of water and of any a proper a proper coolant mixture. We go up to two sixty, three hundred, depending on the mix. Okay, so you're boiling the two twenty. Yeah, and it's actually boiling it's in the tank. Boiling in the tank. tank. Yeah, boiling. Yeah, fifteen. What, fifteen. What's wrong with that picture? Uh, I wish uh, I knew. I wish I knew. <laughs> then, it ain't, then it ain't boiling. What? What? Then it ain't boiling. Mm-hmm. Then you have some oh, type of, oh. you may have like a head problem or some cooling system problem because if it's boiling, what you see, or it's got a hot pocket. I was thinking yeah. of an airlock, yeah. but also kind of a steam pocket. Yeah, hot right? pocket, see. Yeah, I'm thinking, you're thinking of breakfast, Joe. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> the hot pockets. Yeah, but. The hot, um, the hot, what I did, yeah. what I did when I put the thermostat in. Right. Uh, I use the old-fashioned thing. You put pills to keep the thermostat open to help purge the air out of it. So when you start it up, you know, once you start to belch, it kind of gets all the air out of the head, out of the cylinders. It does about 60%, 70%. And then you run it, you know, through three, four cycles. And it's supposed to purge all the air. But it didn't make a difference. Doing this before? I'm sorry? I'm sorry? Uh, Doing this before uh, you... Uh, at, before you got the call? We're getting a double, we get the double the feedback. Call. So I will only say half words. Now the question is: Was there a pre-existing condition on that car, Bronk, that you know? It could be. It's very possible. Uh, I figured maybe have a direction. I'm going to go see my friends down at Chevrolet uh, tomorrow and talk to them and see what they have any ideas with. Still there? Still there? Yeah, I'm here. The does, question is: Does, does the heat, the heat, does the heat work? Okay. the car work, Bronk? Yeah. Yeah, uh, the phone connection is bouncing and echoing back and forth, so it's very difficult to understand and hear what's going on. Okay, maybe we'll get to talk off air because you may have a restriction someplace that's causing the stat not to open. That's that's what I figured. It's got to be a blockage. I'm wondering if the water pump, because that works off the uh, timing chain, if there's something wrong with the pump and I'm not getting circulation. The thermostat. Break out the middle of it. So, in other words, it's just now a restriction. Put it back together and see if it does it. I did if that already. I did that already. I ran it, and, I ran it without the thermostat. And it still does it. Still does it. Still yeah. does it. Yeah. You got a blockage. You got I know. A blockage. Thank you. I know. Thank you. <laughs> no, 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 no. They have this uh, cooling system, system module, module in that car. In that which, car. Which, I never, right. I've never seen. It looks like a radiator, like a radiator built, built, built in. Now, I don't know what that's all about. all about. Well, that actually is there for... It, it shouldn't really restrict the coolant flow per se. Um, I think what you got there... I, I mean, I've had problems. That's, that, that's the Ecotec motor in that car? The four-cylinder? All right. All right. It's got the four-cylinder Ecotec motor? Yeah. 
Yeah. Before. I remember Before. reading about like electronic control thermostats. Is that what that controller would that, do? That's part, that's part of it. Actually, what it does is it preheats the stat to get it open sooner. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, like in your cruise. Right. Um, now the reason why I'm, the reason why I'm saying is is that um, <clears throat> I've seen I've seen where like a heater core. It depends on the body style that it's in. Where yeah. like believe yeah. it or not, certain certain what you wouldn't think of immediately, like say like in, like a, a J body, like a Cavalier. If the heater core was restricted, it doesn't let the thermostat get hot. But, and then of course that would cause it to overheat. And, then, and the thing to do there is yank the stat. And of course, if it stops doing it, okay, you're good. On, on your case, though, if it's still there. Yeah, yeah. Um, how does the car run? Does the car run okay? It runs beautiful. It runs beautiful. Okay. Okay, but it, it just makes that bubbling and gurgling there. Because what, mm. what, what it mm. sounds to me like is, is that you've got excessive. You got excessive gas, and you know not that the kind that you're gonna fix with uh, with tums or nothing. You He's know? been charged with that before. Yeah, I wasn't gonna go there. It's not thank, the first time. Well, thank you, right? <laughs> um, no, you. When something starts bubbling at the you know below the temperature like that, that usually mm-hmm. means that mm-hmm. there's ga- there's either a hot spot or there's exhaust gases. Now, <clears throat> I worked on a. Uh, I worked on a Chevy Cobalt, which not Cobalt, but a Cruze, with the smaller version of that motor. That basically got hap- What would actually happen is, um, what would happen is that the uh, the the uh, it could actually see smoke coming out of the O2 sensor hole because oh, the, the guy overheated the car. All right, mm-hmm. like one mm-hmm. time too many, and then the next thing, you know, we got everything back together. The thermostat worked or whatever, but it would actually blow smoke out of the O2 hole. It cracked the head. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. Did you get a good deal on the car? Yeah, I paid five, yeah, grand, I paid five, grand, five grand for it. Call came, came out of the show. Came out of the show. Eight thousand miles, 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 miles on it. Immaculate. Okay. Yeah. I would suggest that this. I mean, have a talk with the guys at, at, at GM because they have a. Uh, they have a different uh, aspect on things. They're going to see that motor a lot more. But I, I'm going to do right. a little research right. myself. But I have a funny feeling that you may have a crack in something. You know what I mean? Hmm. Because when but I there was, when no, I, there was no water, water coming out of the exhaust, no water exhaust. in the oil uh, whatsoever. There was no uh, telltale on the radiator cap. You know, sometimes you get exhaust gas, you get that little brownish mucky stuff on the radiator cap. Everything was crystal clean in it. That's That's got an expansion tank, right? It doesn't have I'm a sorry? traditional I'm sorry? Rag. expansion, expansion tank. Expansion yes. tank, yes. Right. Okay. What you do is take one of the hoses off. One of the hoses off in the radiator. Take mm-hmm. the old mm-hmm. school vacuum, uh, the old school vacuum fuel pressure gauge. Put it on there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. You gotta run the car while it's cold, though. You know what I mean? Yeah. And see if yeah. that builds pressure when you mm-hmm. don't. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, when the car is cool. Because right. if you do, right. you've got some type of combustion leak. Mm. Well. I figure you know I'll I mean? talk to Chevy. I'll give that a try. And so the worst comes to worst at this point. Uh, here's the keys. Here's the call. You may have some type of issue. <laughs> Question week. You know what? I'm going to do a little thinking right. about this, too, because I... I, I and uh, we, we got we to work on this phone connection here. All yeah, right? So uh, we'll... Uh, I'll, get, I'll get back with you, Bron. Because okay, I, I love head scratches. All you right? know that. All right, guys. Have a great day. I will catch up to you later. Thanks for all the help. You guys are terrific. Keep it up. All right, cool. All right, Brock. Thanks. Thanks. Bye-bye. So long. All right, that was an interesting pro- problem from out in Nevada on yeah. Modem Health Radio here at the at the Wet and Wild Malba Show up in Whitestone. Uh, well, as we sort out our phone issues, it's uh, well, we've had some issues with, uh, with with that area just uh, in the past, but you know, there's there's a problem, a perfect a perfect example of buying something in good faith and it looks great and you don't know what you're getting into because there's a whole... I have a funny feeling that's why he got that car for that deal. Exactly. That's why I like to buy the cars that don't run or, you know, like the, the, there's a hole inside the engine. Like, you know what you're going to fix. You know, there's no two ways about it. But, um... Yeah. So, I mean, there's nothing... You, there's, there's, you know, when it comes to stuff like that, you know, this is the kind of thing where uh, after somebody's done the basic checks, all right, I would go, I would get on like ITN or maybe Identifix, depending, and I'd see what other people have run across with that because that card does have a semi-unique cooling system with the cooling system module. Yeah. But you know, those cool, they they give names to things that don't necessarily. They're not high tech moon moonshot stuff. Right, right. You know what I mean. So in in a situation like that, you know, you start getting suspicious of it when you really don't have to. Yeah. Um, what year did you say that was? Oh seven. Oh seven. Yeah, I'm gonna have to take a gander at that because I, I have I've never had one of those in the shop. You know, they're they're not like they're not very. 
they're not very numerous. You know what I mean? In some neighborhoods, you know, you, you see cars like that. I guess out in, in the west, and you know, in the warm and nicer weather, um, yeah, you would get, you would have some type of, uh, you would have some type of more exposure to that. But.